and thanks for that introduction, Brian. Um, very much appreciated. Uh, love the work that you do for uh, for the Toronto community and also in, in general for the, uh, the cybersecurity space. I think it's very important that we have people like you and others that are contributing to uh, building a, a more safer world. Um, as I said, my name is Abu Kramer, Technical Director for Trend Micro. For people that don't know Trend Micro, it is one of the leading cybersecurity companies on this planet. Um, we exist over 32 years already and uh, have built a very large uh, customer base and have lots of experience both in the, uh, the cybersecurity space but also threat research. Um, and that has given us the opportunity to, to bring forward technology and products that are tailor-made for, um, uh, for today. And, and, and talking about today, I think it's, it's an exciting time. It is a, an interesting time. You see all kinds of things happening, both in the industry, but also globally. Um, for example, the COVID-19 virus is, is, is forcing our companies to to think about how they deliver their applications and um, and how they deal with the workforce, which is is both a challenge but also an opportunity for us in the industry to say, hey, how can we find ways to uh, to address this? And I, I think um, we all have that opportunity to contribute and help um, to to build something that is is absolutely agile that is able to adjust to switching um, uh, circumstances but keep in mind that it needs to be done secure secure and because there's a lot of threat factors outside cyber criminals and all kinds of uh, threat actors that try to misuse this situation so i'm, I'm really thrilled to to talk about this topic because i i know if if you understand it we can also adjust our behavior and, and actually try to build a, a more secure world and Today, I want to talk a little bit more about how to uh, do agile cloud security. Um, but first, we need to understand what that means, right? So, if we talk about doing business, um, they have the same means and, and using uh, all kinds of technology to do business and deliver business. So, basically, any company could do the same thing. The only thing that would differentiate you as a company from another company, from your competitor, is, is speed. If you can deliver something faster than your competitor, you have an advantage. So speed is the one thing that drives us all. Um, and, and one thing that helps us to actually build speed is thing, a thing called DevOps. Um, and, and I think and hope that most people know what DevOps is, but we'll, we'll quickly talk a little bit about it, what, uh, what it means. But what does fast mean for businesses? Well, of course, if you can implement fast in your organization, um, it helps you to go to market uh, way faster, deliver products faster, uh, give them to your customers so they consume it, use it, but also for your users. Uh, like, like in these days, we had to work from home, um, providing new applications that enable them to work from home, I think was very important. So if you are able to deliver those applications quicker, it means that you can adapt to these situations uh, as well. Faster feedback um, and removing obstacles to do that business uh, and also looking at new capabilities, but also taking care of the risk that comes with these new capabilities. So what does FAST look like? So imagine you want to, uh, 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 have your data center uh, connected to the internet. So there's there's two ways that you can do it. Actually, you can dig a hole, put some uh, some pipelines there with some uh, some fiber, and maybe with everything in place, it can take weeks, sometimes months before you get connected. Or in the in the world of of software defined uh, data centers, you can actually do it with a couple of lines of code. For example, in this case. With um, a couple of lines of code, you can create some uh, virtual private connections uh, with additional bandwidth, additional uh, connectivity, and that is just a matter of seconds. The same for deploying a host. Um, either you have to wreck it, so you have to order it, you have to install it, 
uh, wreck it, put some power in place. Um, that can take, again, days, weeks, months. Or you can actually, with a couple of lines of code, um, do this and, and pull up some servers, some workloads, some instances, uh, and make them available to your users. And this is, is the, day, the, the life that we uh, live in nowadays. And we actually, with some code, can do amazing things. Uh, we can be as fast as we, um, we like. So another example of what fast looks like is like in the old days, if you want to ship something and we want to ship some, some goods from one uh, country to another, uh, we were using these, these well, old fashioned ways of, of putting stuff in baskets or in, in, um, in tons. And then trying to put that in a ship was uh, pretty, pretty difficult. So we found a way to do that efficiently. And um, we do this with containers. And containers uh, are an easy way to ship um, because they, they stack very nicely. They're uh, all in a, a standard format. So we know how to deal with that. So in the IT, we actually absorbed that technology um, and, and made it available to how we deliver applications now to our end users. And it's actually very good uh, uh, comparison if you say, hey, for example, the containers um, and the, the place where you store them, and we have things, repositories, you have uh, ways of delivering that, um, making that available, and then shipping it out using technologies like Kubernetes or, or other things. So, these things have made it very easy for us to, to quickly make these services available to our end users. And we've over time changed how we deliver uh, our services. Um, and, and, and take this as another example. If, if a, a chef wanted to deliver food to a uh, person in the restaurant, well, it had to go to a couple of um, uh, iterations and so for example you need like a waiter to uh, to deliver it but what we now do with with devops is actually we're taking out that whole middle stuff and we're delivering that food directly from the chef that's being the developer that uh, consume it which can be your employee or it can be your um, your customer and this is what we call devops right uh, we have this constant loop from um, constantly building new applications, testing them, releasing them, then putting it in, in, in workload, deploying it, and then putting in the operation. Um, and based upon what, how we operate, we get some feedback, so we monitor, we, we adjust, and then we, we code. And this happens constantly. So this is a constant um, de development uh, plan, and this is actually what DevOps is. It's not like a physical process uh, per se, but it's also an embracement of your organization of this, uh, this whole way of thinking. And it's a constant loop. I, I know organizations that deliver applications uh, sometimes multiple times a day. And, and there's a lot of examples, for example, at uh, AWS or, or uh, Amazon, for example, that is delivering on their website almost like every minute an update using DevOps technology that is services to um, update new functionality and features. So I think this is fantastic for us as, a, as an industry to say, hey, we can actually give fast to our organizations that we work for. But there are some challenges as well. And like, this is a, a bit of an older um, uh, quote. And I think it's it's still very relevant. Uh, a security guy that said, hey, I'm the one that put no in innovation. And that's actually how some people perceive security in, in the world of DevOps, right? Um, security often is seen the, the break on, on how we want to the, um, deliver applications. Hey, I want to bring out this new feature. Yeah, sure, but we need first to see if it, it's patched, if it's uh, not causing any issues, if it's not uh, um, getting some threats to our, to our user, et cetera. Um, so that is a concern. But you know what? Whoever slows DevOps down, whoever slows fast down is actually the enemy. So 
security is, is sometimes um, seen as the, the enemy. So how, how can we address that? Knowing that we have to deal with uh, challenges, right? Uh, so what are these challenges? Well, we have to deal with, with all kinds of things like open repositories, repositories that have uh, instances delivered that are not uh, created by ourselves, but by somebody else. Uh, who has that person? And how long is that repository already alive? Um, does it maybe use out-of-date libraries or code? Are there maybe some vulnerabilities um, that uh, resides in those repositories, those images, those, uh, those codes? Um, what about if I deliver an application online, do I maybe by, um, by accident deliver something that has malicious code in it? Or uh, maybe it delivers a malware. Um, maybe there is keys uh, from our um, certificates still in or maybe passwords and what about compliance checks that we need to do if, if if we're in an organization like a financial institution or a healthcare that require us to um, take care of whatever we do on the IT side um, and whatever we do with the data that we uh, get from our users so there's a lot of challenges if it comes to delivering applications. And, and there's been many, many examples of where things went wrong in the past, um, where uh, images were delivered that had backdoor uh, in it built in, or there was uh, still um, all kinds of malicious code or vulnerabilities. Um, and, and this list goes on and on and on. So there are definitely concerns that we uh, need to think about. And also the challenge is, is like a, an organization that is fully embracing DevOps and that is a, a very flexible organization. You're, you're not per se fit into a process or a system because what you use today can be different tomorrow. Where security, they always think or want to be in the middle of everything. So if you want to do something and you want to talk with that, we need to check what, whatever you're going to do. So that is a little bit of a conflict um, between how DevOps organizations want to be versus how sometimes security and infosec admins want to operate. Um, and on the, on the other side, we also sometimes see that the security people feel that they always have to clean up between their developers or the uh, people that are actually implementing new applications using things like DevOps. Um, so it's, it's, it, it is a little bit of a battle between both the DevOps side and on the other side, the InfoSec side. So that being said, there is a way to address this. And um, I think that is the exciting part of, of this talk because there is, um, there is ways that um, we can actually help developers to embrace more agile, more uh, faster, more quicker ways of delivering applications. And then for that, we're using automation. And automation has been in DevOps a lot. We do uh, more and more with scripting. We do more and more with APIs. And we can actually do the same thing, um, embracing security as well as part of that whole de uh, development process. And I'll, I'll come back to that topic a little bit later. So, but what you are, one thing to do is actually build security into that, that full DevOps pipeline. And for example, uh, when during building of your um, the application, you already want to build in some automated scanning. Uh, so check on what code are you using? Is that code uh, maybe out of date or has it maybe malicious uh, content? Um, during your testing, do some risk assessments uh, before you actually promote it uh, into your um, your repository during release um, you want to have full automation into your delivery tools like kubernetes so whatever you put there we can you can actually see from the infosec side and determine is this good or is this bad and then when you go to deployment and operation you actually want to have um, real-time workload protection so whatever you put in operation needs to be checked constantly hey, are there new vulnerabilities? Are there maybe um, malware or, or virus uh, challenges that we need to take care of? Because what, what maybe checked yesterday 
can be still infected tomorrow. So there's a constant need for checking security. And then when you have some feedback like, hey, there is a vulnerability, there is maybe a malicious code, you can actually feed that back to the developer and say, hey, we need to maybe use um, another library, another module in our building and give that information back automatically to the developer. So he can validate and patch and fix um, his build and then put the whole thing back into operation. So that whole circle can be automated with security integrated. And, and we all already talked about having infrastructure as a code. Eh? So uh, setting up a virtual network, auto-scaling your service, putting load balances in, in place as well. We can actually do the same thing with code also um, using um, uh, APIs and scripting. And one platform that uh, is built for this is Trend Micro Cloud One. So Trend Micro Cloud One is a platform specifically uh, built for cloud builders that enables them to embrace everything we want, we want to do in the cloud. So if you want to release new workloads or we want to build new applications using maybe container security, there's all kinds of technologies that we can uh, use to, to actually secure that environment. Um, so Micro Cloud One is a, a single sign-on platform that helps uh, cloud builders to embrace everything that's going to happen in the cloud uh, using one single sign-on, one place of procurement and billing. Um, and it's actually modular, so you can start maybe with one module and add modules when you grow. And some of these modules are um, here for a long time already, like uh, the Cloud uh, One workload security, that one, it helps to protect instances that we have in the data center, like uh, maybe running on your VMware environment, or maybe nowadays in, in your Azure uh, environment from Microsoft, or maybe your AWS environment. So all the instances that run there can be protected. But then you want to deploy your containers as well. Um, and, and checking that pipeline, uh, being able to check any container that you put online, uh, can also be checked on the Tremicro Cloud One. In the process of building your applications, you can actually check during your programming already what type of code you're using and how your code is uh, being used, if it's secure, yes or no. So it helps to protect even as serverless functions using all kinds of applications and um, APIs. Um, this is technology that we've um, acquired a couple of years ago from Immunio. It's a Montreal-based uh, company and now part of Micro. And these guys have, have built technology that allows developers to, um, during their building of the applications, already build in security from scratch. And I would always advise, the sooner you can secure an application, the cheaper it is. Because if you want to um, protect something, actually if you protect the code, already from the beginning, you don't have to protect all the instances that it's running on. That one piece of code can maybe run in a thousand machines. So instead of having to protect thousand of machines, if you already secure that one piece of code, that will really be helpful already. Uh, more and more organizations putting their, um, their data now in, in cloud storages like S3 buckets or uh, other uh, technologies and being able there to or there uh, against malicious content, yes or no, uh, is becoming very, very, um, very much important. And what is also becoming more and more important is, is checking uh, the conformity of your delivery. Uh, is your cloud configured securely? So we have technology called cloud conformity that will check whatever you've deployed in, in uh, Microsoft Azure or in AWS and, and being able to check against uh, industry standards and say, hey, uh, whatever you're doing, doing there, is this good or bad? Do you use encryption? Have you maybe code that is um, that's out of date? Or maybe you're opening up VPCs to uh, the rest of the world where it should only be accessed by few people only. Cloud conformity can actually constantly check that for you on, a, on a, almost a, a real-time basis. And last but not least, um, part of Cloud One is also the network layer 
um, security where we can actually check the communications between all your uh, clouds, your instances, your lambdas, uh, between your containers and check about that communication level. Um, and all of this um, is, is built in a way that you can actually fully automate it. So you can actually adjust to um, whatever speed uh, or flexibility that you need. And you can scale up, scale down uh, as well, depending on the needs of your organization. So giving cloud builders uh, a tool set to actually secure whatever they need to embrace for their organizations. So with that, you can build secure, ship fast, run anywhere. Um, run anywhere, any cloud, any environment, either in a data center, in a cloud, in a hybrid cloud, um, and supporting all these, these environments and services that are being delivered using all kinds of um, platforms, uh, being either traditional ones or new ones, uh, all kinds of functions like Lambda functions or serverless technology, um, using all kinds of platforms, uh, of course, Windows, but also all types of Linux. Um, because that's, that's the world that we live in. Eh? It, it, it was often a Microsoft world in, in the past, but nowadays we're seeing organizations embracing multiple tool sets, multiple platforms to as quickly as possible deliver that, uh, that application. So and with that, um, you, you, you can actually automate uh, your security and help to scale with speed. And so security as code helps the pipeline. Um, using RESTful APIs, using scripting, helping to change policies, checking status, or uh, do automatic reporting. And by automating this, uh, you're giving both the developer, but also the InfoSec people, tools to um, both have their needs fulfilled. And that I think is a, eventually what that we want to achieve here. And we're going to talk about this uh, a little bit more, especially during the, uh, the panel. Um, I would like to open it up for discussions there to see and learn also from you guys, what are your questions, um, uh, but also your experience. Um, but eventually what you want to do is, is assuring that your cloud infrastructure is deployed securely. Um, because we're being hammered with more and more regulations, compliances, etc. So um, this is going to be our responsibility as a developer, as a security guy. One tool that we've provided as from micro to help people to embrace um, uh, automation in, in, in their DevOps world and security is uh, the Automation Center. And the Automation Center is a website where you can actually find all kinds of examples of APIs and scripts in different languages so you can learn how to automate security in a in a devops world either being containers or being serverless so um, if you want to learn i would definitely uh, recommend you to go to that we website available and it's constantly growing and being added upon so uh, people can use this as a start point to see hey how are scripts being used to further automate uh, automate uh, security in a DevOps world. And, and this is one example from Cloud One, uh, specifically for container security. Eh? So we have the pipeline where you commit, you build, and, uh, and uh, uh, put your registry and then put it in the uh, repository. And with automation based upon APIs, you can actually do all kinds of, of nifty things. Uh, you can scan your images, you can um, pull some information from those registries to actually see how many registers you have, which ones are secure, which ones may, might be uh, some concern. And I think that both developers and InfoSec people. And, and another example that I want to um, put out is our conformity tool. Um, to auto check your, um, your cloud environment against best practices and compliance standards. Uh, and, at the moment that you, you put something online using your pipeline, actually the conformity tool is able to see it back and say, hey, 
you maybe missed some things like encryption or, or other best practices that would be needed to deliver applications secure in the cloud. Um, it even helps you to, um, to autocorrect with all kinds of automating scripts. Again, this is, is helping organizations, organizations to be more quickly and more agile. So if you want to try this out, I will website uh, www.cloudconformity.com you can do a, a free trial and run this against your um, azure or your aws environment and see maybe how your environment currently stacks up in terms of cloud conformity so with trend micro um, cloud one we can actually help you to protect your journey in the cloud either going from a physical server virtual server to now virtual desktops, uh, cloud providers, um, using containers or even serverless. And I think that is, is becoming more and more organizations that they don't want to have specific solutions for, for, for maybe a virtual server and then something else for the public cloud and then maybe something else for the containers. You now with, with Cloud One, you have that one single platform that actually will help you to address this full stack uh, of delivery mechanisms uh, using both your physical data center and your uh, your set of cloud providers. Um, there's two more links, um, or actually one more link that I want to share. So the first one was cloudconformity.com. Um, try it out. The other one is go to trendmicro.com slash containers, where we have a, a set of technologies and examples that will help developers and infosec people to further learn about what you can do to um, embrace security and agile development of applications. And with that, I'm going to give it back to, uh, to, uh, to Brian. Keep in mind, we have the chat and the, the, the Q&A box. So if there's any questions now or going forward, feel free to ask them. Um, we're here to educate, we're here to, um, to interact. So please use it. So thanks everybody.